name is Jenny, and I'm a wife and mom raising two kids. But I used to live a more glamorous life as a TV reporter. I was on the nightly news interviewing pop stars and politicians. So when I said goodbye to TV and hello to motherhood, I suddenly discovered what we moms are up against. We live in a world that tells us to be rich and famous, thin and successful. You know, almost nobody says, oh, hey, you're a mom? That is fabulous. But you are fabulous, and I'm here to tell you why. It's the Channel Mom Show, celebrating you with Jenny Dean Schmidt. This holiday season, give your loved ones a spa getaway without the spa price tag. Lemongrass Spa offers pampering bath and body products like handmade frosted cranberry soap for just $6. So visit LemongrassSpa.com today. Hey, welcome back to the Channel Mom Show. We have young Miss Shaley in the studio today. I want to say hello to Shaley. She's 10, right? 10 years old. We are here on Mile High Sports Radio, AM 1510, FM 937. I am your host, Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're so glad to have you here on the Channel Mom Show. We are here for moms uh, because a lot of people uh, forget about moms in the media, so that's why we exist. And, and it, it's not boring stuff. Today, you're not going to believe what we have for you. We have a dating coach in the studio as well as a psychotherapist. We have Tracy Fagan, dating coach, author, and speaker. Suzanne Simpson, licensed psychotherapist, who, who really has a heart for single women and single moms. And we're going to talk about that today. I, I, both of you have been interesting background. Tracy, just tell people dating coach what the heck you do and Suzanne you worked with Tony Robbins so I want to hear just a bit about both of you well what I do is work with people one-on-one -on -one as well as through um, webinars and and, um, and online type um, uh, situations and really challenge people to think about who they are and who they are in this world and how that is attracting what type of relationships they're having oh. um, a lot of times people will find themselves um, dating the same person with a different name and a different haircut. Yeah. And um, the common denominator is you. Yeah. Over and over, the same, the same kind of person. That's right. Exactly. And Suzanne, you worked with motivation, motivational speaker Tony Robbins. That <laughs> Were you motivated? <laughs> Boy, was I motivated. <laughs> you know, we found that so many people have these limitations. They, they just um, self-sabotage. They get in their own way. And, you know, what we did is really help them discover what was deep down that was creating that and get them in places where they can move past those limitations. You know, maybe it was a risk that they weren't used to doing, or maybe it was just a belief pattern that they needed to really change in order to, to get into a great place of believing they could accomplish something. Absolutely. I thought a lot about this because we, we had a friend of mine on, uh, who used to be a TV reporter on the show, a single mom, and she said that she was approached afterwards by another single mom who said, thank you. Thank you so much for going on the show and admitting your own struggles as a single mom and speaking to me directly because I, I feel misunderstood, I feel overwhelmed, and you at least gave me a voice and, and addressed my, my concerns. And you know, there's a part of me that wants to pretend it's all perfect. I happen to be married. Um, I've known my husband since I was four, which makes some people gag <laughs> and feel like they have to throw up because it, it seems perfect. No marriage is perfect. And I'm here to admit I have a fabulous hus husband, but nobody marriage is perfect. And I want every mom out there to know who feels insecure that other people have it better than her, that I really wanted to address every mom today and say, look, we're not looking down on you. This isn't judgment. We're just saying this is the reality, and this is what uh, single moms struggle with, and we're going to address it today, and we're going to talk about it, and we're here to help you. So why don't you guys tell me? I'm just going to throw out a couple stats, and then I want to kind of see what your concerns are and what you hear from single moms. Because you're a psychotherapist. You're a dating coach. You're dealing with single moms daily and what they're concerned about and what they're running up against. Um, you know, all kinds of dangerous things even. They, they come up against violent men. They come up against all kinds of things, financial fallout, you know, so on and so forth. So I want you to talk about that. 9.9 .9 million, basically 10 million single mothers in America right now. Uh, and that is almost tripled since 1970. So we have a new phenomenon going on, that there are a lot of single moms raising babies by themselves, that um, more than a third of all babies now are born out of wedlock. In certain populations, it's 70 percent, uh, depending on your, your uh, ethnicity, unfortunately, but it's, it, there are certain populations that 70 percent of the babies are born out of wedlock, and it's 30-something it's now for across the board born out of wedlock. And some people may say, well, who cares? It doesn't matter. And, and I, I frankly think that, you know, 40, 50 percent of society is at that place now that says, this doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're married. That just doesn't matter. A baby is a baby. Um, the statistics would tend to disagree with you that, that, that kids, unfortunately, of single moms are more likely to go to jail, more likely to not do well in school, all kinds of stuff. Um, that's not, again, it's not an indictment. 
but it does admit there's a struggle when there's not a second person in the household helping you raise a baby. So why don't you guys tell me what your concerns are? Well, I think the, the biggest concern that I see is, is absolutely that they have to raise the child by themselves and they don't have that additional support of a spouse that can sound off things with them and support them in the discipline and support them yeah. in financial areas, you know, which is big. But, you know, the other part of it is I see so many of them are carrying around the resentments from the past. And all of that just bleeds out into the family, you know, as far as how they feel. They haven't forgiven or they haven't dealt with what's inside them. And so, therefore, you know, the child picks that up. And I think that's one of the biggest problems I see is that, you know, they, they could feel so much better about themselves if they would just really clear out some of that and forgive and move on. Because, you know, relationships are tough. I mean, I, I got to hand it to you. I'm married, but. It, I married late in life. You know, I waited till 50, you know, which really, was, yeah, you were, you were single until you were 50. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And I just, you know, I, I didn't find the right one. I had a lot of issues with my dad um, that I wanted to deal with that seemed to keep attracting the wrong type of guys. And so I, I didn't want to start a marriage with the wrong type, but sometimes that happens and you're, you know, you're pulled into it because of subconscious programming. And that's the thing I see so much is that we're, we're attracted to people sometimes out of our own history. Yeah. And, yeah, and and you know what? You're speaking to a lot of women today, mm -hmm. because a lot of women struggled with their daddies, and that completely, uh, or, or or they just had a relationship that they wouldn't even call a struggle, but that but the way they related to their daddy affected the way in which they looked for a spouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And then the other part is when I think the other big problem is when the the, the kid is going back and forth into households with different values, uh, a different. It's like a different culture almost. And so they, they don't really know how to deal with the rules of those different households, and therefore the kids get very confused. Because in parenting, you know, everything I've often taught parents is to be consistent, you know, to, to discipline consistently, to, to be on the same page. And when they go back and forth with families, they get very confused. And, you know, who's my dad? Who's my mom? You know, it's amazing how kids need that consistency. Well, and, and it comes back to the basic question, which basically all of us need answered, which is, am I loved and who loves me? And if you're being tossed around, that question might be asked a little more often with a little more insecurity. That, I mean, I think that's what happens. And, and I've, I've had my, I have a ton of friends who are single moms, and they admit the, the problems with it for them. For them. And by the way, I'm just going to say it again because I, I don't want a single moms to say, well, that whole show was about how, how crappy single mom motherhood is. It's not that. It's like let's address what's going on, just like married issues. I mean, I have people on here to talk about all the messed up marriages. So there are issues with every single scenario. But in this case, yeah, the kids suffer. Tracy, you, you, you have a compelling story. And, you, and, and I'm hoping that you're willing to talk about most of it. Tracy's a dating coach, folks. And, and she has some interesting information if, if you want to ask her about the dating situation if you're a single mom. Because Tracy knows what she's doing and she counsels moms in this area. But it's because you've been there. Yes. So tell people about that. Uh, well, basically, my um, previous pattern was uh, marry, divorce, repeat. And um, I found myself in, in two relationships that um, were very similar in a lot of ways, um, and neither one of them were a good place for me. Yeah. Um, I've got a daughter from my first marriage, and I drug her through the second marriage. And um, finally, when I said, you know what, this is, this is not working at all for either one of us, got out. And that's when I started doing the work on myself, a lot of what Suzanne was talking about with, with clearing out some of the past and um, understanding cycles and, and patterns that were going on. And then all of a sudden, I, my counselor said, you know, I think you've got that kind of lift. He's like, let's start in the dating world. Because I want, I want a wonderful marriage. I want Yeah, that I think everybody does. Thing. And you know what? I think that's one reason people don't get married. It's because they want a wonderful marriage so badly they're afraid they can't get it. So instead they cohabitate, they don't commit because they're... They've seen their parents fail or whatever it is, but people are afraid to get married. Am I wrong about that? I, I think that you're right on yeah. with that. Definitely. I think. Yeah. But the part that's, um, I think, a big misnomer about that is, I mean, if you live together, it's kind of like all of the downsides of marriage with none of the up because there's not that solid commitment. You've got that escape clause written in. Yeah. You know, if you torque me off enough, I'm out of here. Yeah. I can just pack up my stuff and go. Yeah. And the kids sense that. They yes. say that when you do research, the kids sense that. Is yes. that correct? I, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you said your daughter asked you a question on the way over here to this interview. Yes, I did. And Shaylee, I didn't ask you your permission first if I could share this. But. <laughs> she's smiling. I think she did. <laughs> um, but she asked me on the way down here, she goes, Mommy, how do you feel about people living together before they're married? 
-hmm. I love that you're going to answer this because we're probably going to make some people mad, but that's all good. So you go ahead and answer it. And mind you, this is my 10-year-old daughter, and these are the types of conversations we have, and this is what I challenge single moms to have these kind of conversations. Um, basically, I said, honey, I, I, you obviously have the choice to do what you want to do when it gets to that point in your life. Mm -hmm. um, but I would hope that you listen to what I say and not necessarily do what I did. Um, I lived with Shaylee's dad before we got married, mm -hmm. and obviously it ended in divorce. Um, <laughs> yeah. But the biggest thing is um, there's statistically no difference um, in the divorce rate between the people that cohabitate and the people that don't. So it doesn't help you is the point. It doesn't cohabit. help you. And yeah. the, other, the other point that I brought up to her is, you know what, in the Bible, God tells us don't live together before you're married. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, if you do, you're not, you know, God doesn't hate you and turn no, away from you, no. but he's got some pretty good guidelines to life. So when, when God speaks, I listen, at least I try to. And yeah. that's kind of what we talked about is um, it, it's a choice. But again, you can see the signs and what a true person is, their heart, um, without having to live with them. What do you think single moms struggle with the most? I mean, most of the single moms I know wish they were still married, not necessarily to that guy, but wish they were still married. Uh, but they've done surveys that, that suggest that two thirds of all people who get a divorce after the fact say they wish they would have stayed with that first person because now they've tried three other people or whatever it is. Two thirds. Now that doesn't, there's another third there and Tracy, you might fall into that other third, but two thirds of all people regret it because then you move on to the same thing and, and they're the common denominator and the same problems erupt again and they same they erupt again and they erupt again. So Anyway, what do you think single moms in the next three minutes we have before we go to break struggle with the most? What are they weeping about at night? What are they struggling with during the day? Tell me. I think a big thing is they feel the loneliness. They feel the, the emptiness, the, okay, I mean, I've got to be in two places at once. I've got to pay the bills. I've got to cook the dinner. I've got to clean the dishes. I've got to bathe the kid. I've got to put him to bed. I've got to do everything, and I am just tired. Yeah, you identify that. I can see your eyes <laughs> getting sad. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm serious. Yeah, I, and what would you say, Suzanne? I agree with that. They don't take time for themselves. And I know just from my own journey, it, that, that alone time with yourself and listening to what your needs are and maybe forming a community, which is extremely important for single women, um, yeah. that if they have that, there, there is that loneliness, but there is that support. And, and maybe a, a male companion friend, you know, that can be sort of a friend to the kid or the kids, you know, so that they just don't feel like they're carrying the whole load. And relationship with God is huge because yeah. obviously, you know, people can't do everything. If we know that there's some type of higher power there that's supporting us, then we can do a lot of things knowing that we have a partnership there. Yeah. The scripture actually does say that God is a a husband to the widows and, mm -hmm. and, and comes alongside the fatherless and so on. And so I think in our modern society where it's not cool to, to quote certain things or to direct people in certain ways without being like, it's all good. It all works. I believe very strongly that I, I wish women could grab onto that, that God is there for them and, and that they can get comfort from that. And especially single moms who need that presence in their lives, you know? So, uh, Suzanne Simpson, Tracy Fay, it's Fagan, yeah? I'm saying yes. that right? Yes. We're so happy to have you on board. We're, we're going to come back with you in the next segment. And, uh, you know, we really want single moms to feel loved on today and helped. And we would love to answer your questions if you got some. So, stay tuned for the Channel Mom Show. <laughs> 